and a very different um, evolution, I guess. The West Side Arts District, so we had learned some lessons in 1998 with the downtown um, district. Uh, and we had also gotten organized as an arts community in the, in the seven years in between these two districts. So um, the quick story is in 2002, there's a mayoral election. Mayor Cianci is no longer, um, no longer an option. Um, so <laughs> the arts community galvanizes um, and really makes arts a, a really central um, topic of conversation in the mayoral debates. Um, so the mayor, can, mayoral candidates are all paying attention and all promising to establish an office, right, uh, for cultural affairs within government. We had an office of cultural affairs in the parks department that was doing some programming at the Riverwalk, um, but that was really all they were doing was just a little programming. So Mayor Cicilline comes into office and he really sees the potential for arts and culture to be a community building. Uh, Thing for the city, right? So he establishes the office to balance the sort of economic development and community building, but really to provide centralized support for the arts. One of the things that we took on in 2005, this is before I joined the office, but was our first arts and economic prosperity study. So we started to wrestle with what do these numbers mean? You know, who's here? All of those questions. Um, we also started to realize though that there was power in using this information in other in other ways. And one of it was the establishment of this West Side Arts District. So the arts community didn't actually live downtown, um, and so that downtown arts district was a little bit alienating. They lived on the West Side, um, and so now we have the numbers and the information to do it, to go to the West Side. So instead of that tightly drawn little rectangle, what you see is this funny, you know, little, uh, <laughs> we're gonna go where the people are kind of district, and that's how the boundaries here were established. Um, and so if we go to the next slide, um, what that did was it grabbed a couple of different adjacent communities um, in a way that the downtown district wasn't able to. So um, it grabbed the, word start, uh, it grabbed the, the district up here, this, okay, no, sorry, back it up. Grabbed, I'm gonna go the other direction. Okay, grabbed the Olneyville uh, community of artists. So Olneyville, at this time has recently been through a really massive conversation about gentrification. There were a number of developers who were coming in and converting mill spaces. Um, there was a lot of, it's a very challenged community. It has a very high concentration of artists living there. Um, they were very concerned about the implications of having these developers in their community, in their backyard. Um, there was a one of those landmark historic preservation uh, moments. So there's a mill building where there are a number of studios, a number of artists living there illegally, a number of public safety concerns, um, but it's a really organic arts community and the developer purchased the building. All of those artists were displaced and so, yeah. So, um, so a bit of a crisis for the arts community uh, in Providence, but actually really a rallying point uh, because from there, we have um, Clay Rockefeller and Nick Bauda, two individuals with some um, personal wealth at their fingertips and an interest in really um, nurturing the arts community in Providence and doing that as organically as possible. So they see what's happened at Fort Thunder. This is the quick version, there's a lot more details, but they establish an arts community um, in this area up here. Um, so they establish a live work arts artist community and next to that live work on the site, there is a former steel manufacturing plant. Um, they want to nurture industrial design because that was their interest, and so they established the steel yard, uh, which is a brown, on a brownfield site, but the brownfield site now has been remediated, and it's this amazing, gorgeous space um, that has recently won a Rudy Bruner Award for urban design. For people who are interested in that, they're getting the award next week. Uh, but they really are kind of a mission of, education on nurturing industrial designers um, and on workforce development. So, so that's up there and it has stimulated, it has um, sort of catalyzed a lot of other development in that area. So, so we've got the only real artists, we've got the steel yard area, we've got, this grabs up Federal Hill, which is our little Italy, so a culture, you know, in all essence, it's a cultural district. Um, lots of restaurants there, retail there. What the arts district did was also encourage galleries to move there. So it, actually there was a, this is an area where we can say there's a cause and effect, where we can see that the arts district had made a difference. Um, back to the individual artists, though, we also grabbed the 
sort of <coughs> West Broadway neighborhood, and these are all this is pretty much residential here, so where people actually lived and had their studios. Um, this was one of the first areas in the city that had been um, gentrified, for lack of a better word, but starting in the 1980s, people started to move into those Victorians um, and you know renovate them and all of that. But lots and lots of people living here. So this is a very different decision about how do you define the boundaries of who's in, who's out. <laughs>